All right, uh, today we're going to start chapter six. Uh, the topic on this chapter is called acid rain and uh, ocean acidification. Okay, basically in this chapter, we're going to talk about acid and bases, which are two important types of compounds in chemistry. And of course, in this chapter, we want to talk about something related to acid, about related to the society regarding the acid and base topics, that is the acid rain and also the ocean acidification topic. So these are uh, three questions after we talk about the basics of uh, acid and bases. We want to ask, what is acid rain and uh, is normal rain acidic or not? And what is, why some rings are called acid rain? And also, we want to know, is acid rain worse in some parts of this country, or they're universal. Is acid rain related to something uh, geog geog geography-wise? And also, uh, is there any way we can neutralize the acid rain, or is there any natural uh, condition that can neutralize the acid rain in some parts of the country? So these are some questions we want to answer uh, throughout this chapter. So first, let's take a look and study the basics of chemistry water acids and water bases, and what the terms describing acid and base. Okay, there are a few theories about acid and bases. Okay, in, in general chemistry, we're going to actually learn three theories, but in this class, we're going to learn one of the theories that describing acids and bases, that is called the Arrhenius acid and base theory. Again, this is one of the theories defining acid and bases. In this theory, acid is defined as a substance that releases hydrogen plus ion in aqueous solution. So first question for you guys, what is an aqueous solution? What solution, or what is a solution, and what solution is called an aqueous solution? We studied that in chapter 5. Wouldn't it just be Water is the solvent. solvent. Right. So when water is the solvent, the solution is called what? An aqueous solution. So if a substance dissolves in water, basically, means what? Make an aqueous solution. And if the substance releases hydrogen plus ion, then that is the definition of Arrhenius acid. Okay, this is one of theory. Now, the hydrogen plus ion, in chemistry, most of the time we call it a proton. So basically, what is an acid? Acid is a substance that releases a proton when dissolved in water, right? This is the definition. But why hydrogen plus is called a proton? What do you think this hydrogen plus is called a proton? Because it only has a proton. Because what? It only has a proton. It only has a proton for what? For hydrogen, right? Hydrogen is the first element, right? Periodically, first element. <clears throat> first element means the atomic number is what? Is one. An atomic number means what? One means what? It has one proton and one electron. Is that right? Proton and electron number is same. But if you have a plus charge, means what? The electron is what? Is lost. So when a hydrogen loses the electron, the hydrogen plus becomes what? Simply what? A proton. So from now on, we will refer hydrogen plus as a proton. Okay, so this is an example of an acid, very common acid in our stomach actually, called hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is formed after HCl gas, again, hydrogen chloride is a gas, actually, gas is compound. But hydrogen chloride gas is very water soluble. When hydrogen chloride gas dissolves in water, becomes a solution, then this HCl will dissociate. The bond between H and Cl will dissociate into a proton and a chloride minus, a chloride ion. You can see that there was a bond between them, but when the bond breaks, breaks, both the electron went to where? Went to the chlorine. That is why you have hydrogen as a what? 
as a plus, chlorine as a minus. And this reaction shows HCl, hydrochloric acid, is an acid. Now, another, another things that happen when HCl dissolves in water is when HCl dissolves in water, this molecule will completely ionize. That means this bond will completely break. You will not have intact HCl molecule left in an aqueous solution of HCl. All you have in HCl solution will be what? Will be protons and what? Cl minuses. An acid like this, that completely ionized, is called a strong acid. What is a strong acid? A strong acid it means what? You don't have the molecule left. All you have is what? Proton and chlorine. Okay, we call an acid a strong acid. Good, makes sense. These are the definition of acids. And here are some practice asking you, hey, can you follow the, the format of HCl ionization? Can you write the equation for these three acids when they dissolve in water and what do they form? The first two are easy. HI is very similar to hydrochloric acid, becomes a proton and what? Iodide ion, I minus. The second acid is called the nitric acid. When nitric acid dissolves in water, it would ionize into proton and, do you guys remember the name of this guy? NO3 minus is called, we learned in chapter five, a polyatomic ion called nitrate. Okay, very good, NO3 minus got a nitrate. So nitrate and proton are the products when nitric acid ionizes water. The third acid is very unique, okay, very unique, called a sulfuric acid, which is the acid in your car battery, actually, it's a battery acid. This molecule has two hydrogens, if you can take a look. The formula is H2SO4. Two hydrogens are both ionizable, means both hydrogens, when dissolved in water, can produce what? Produce proton, of course, this acid has two hydrogens, means this acid eventually can produce how many protons? Two protons. But not all protons, not both protons come off the same time. You can see that the ionization actually happens in two steps. The first step is one of the protons, what? Came off. You get HSO4 minus. We call this ion hydrogen sulfate. And then from hydrogen sulfate minus, you came off another proton to end up with a what? What's this called? Sulfate. Sulfate. So both protons came off the different times, stepwise. But both hydrogens will become protons after sulfuric acid is dissolved in water. Does it make sense? Again, practice with those, so you may not have the keys here. But these are the equations showing what? Showing these three are strong acids strong acids. Good. Next, let's take a look at the proton. Okay, take a look at the proton. A proton, like I said, is a very tiny but what? Charged species. Hydrogen plus. Hydrogen, we know hydrogen ion. Hydrogen atom is very small. Proton after losing electron is even smaller. So this species is highly charged and small. So this species is, is very reactive. It doesn't exist or cannot exist alone. When in water, of course, remember the solvent is always water. You have a lot of water molecules around it. So when in water, the proton will actually bond with a water molecule to form a species like this. H2O, that is water, becomes H3O plus. We call this species hydrogen ion. Okay, hydrogen ion. You can see that how the species is formed. It's actually formed by a covalent bond formed between the O and that what? And that proton. Yes. Remember what is a covalent bond? Covalent bond is two atoms what? Share electrons. In this case, 
the shared electron, this, this red, shared electron, both electrons came from where? From the oxygen, because proton, again, has what? No electrons at all. Does this make sense? So this bond, both electrons here, actually came from where? From the oxygen. So basically, the oxygen grabs that proton, make a bond, to give us what? Hydrogen ion. Does this make sense? So what really happened when HCl in water, what really happened is when the proton comes off, the proton is not alone. The proton is actually accepted by what? By water. So this is the real complete reaction when HCl dissolves in water. Complete means what? Means it shows what's happening for that proton. The proton is actually what? Taken by water to give you what? Hydronium ion. Now, of course, Cl is still Cl minus. That is the same. Okay, that is the same. This is the real reaction. This is the reality. What happens when HCl dissolves in water? Okay, I can take a comparison between this reaction and that one. This one just show you what? Gives a proton. Okay, in a very what? Simplified way. But in reality, this proton is actually linked to what? To a water. Okay, to a water. This is the reality. Does it make sense? Now, what's the difference between a proton and a hydronium? Okay, then how do we how do I know which one do we use? Which one is it? Here is what we can put here. Proton and hydronium ion are basically the same thing. You can use them interchangeably, but you need to know, in reality, proton exists as what? As hydronium ion. There's no free protons in water. If there's a proton in water, the proton has to be what? Bond with water to give you what? Hydronium ion. But what is hydronium ion? Hydronium ion is basically what? A proton. It's just not free. It's linked with what? Bond with what? With water. So in reality, you can use these two interchangeably, but you know this is just for simplifying purpose. This is what? For real. The reality, what a proton is. A proton is basically a hydronium ion when you're talking about aqueous solution. Does this make sense, guys? Okay, again, these reactions, this one and this reaction are interchangeable. They're the same, but this is a simplified reaction. This reaction shows you what? Reality. What's really happening is water takes that proton. Okay, water takes that proton. Right? Next is one of the questions in your this week's assignment, web assignment six. Okay, web assignment six asks you to look up. Okay, when 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 you when you heard of this word acid, all mo most people think of acid as something what? Dangerous, right? Uh, corrosive, toxic, okay, like kind of you, you get a bad image of it. So this question asks you, can you check your food labels, uh, labels or beverages? Can you make a list of the acid that actually in food and beverage? Okay, if you're eating those, that means what? They're not that as dangerous as you think. So ask you to list five, I think they're asking list of five in your, in the, in the, in the web assignment as the five acids that are contained in food or beverage and also speculate the purpose of each acid right again this is your work uh, in your web assignment six and here is a example showing you three of them okay these three organic acids that are actually in all kinds of fruits okay the first one is citric acid is very common in, in seeing those citrus like lemon orange lime even strawberry and pineapple, they have citric acid. The second one is malic acid, are in these kind of fruits. And the third one is tartaric acid. Have you guys heard of tartar? Tartar powder? That means uh, if you could do some kind of baking, you, or your kitchen may have it. The powder is actually very sour. It basically contains the tartaric acid. Okay, again, these are some organic acid in different kinds of foods. And these are some more examples showing you where they're located. But again, uh, complete the web assignment, you will see that the acids are actually around us. They're not have a bad image of, or not all of them have a bad image of being corrosive and dangerous 
we, our system has a lot of acid. For example, like I mentioned earlier, our stomach is full of this reaction. Our stomach is basically full of hydrochloric acid in our stomach fluids. That's why when you throw up, you feel what? The sour, right? The sour is from hydrochloric acid. Or sometimes you have heartburn. What, what caused the heartburn? Hydrochloric acid. Okay, so these are some info about acids. Next, okay, some topic we have mentioned a few minutes ago about strong acid versus weak acid, these two terms. Like we said earlier, HCl is a strong acid. What happened when HCl dissolves in water is what? HCl completely ionized to give you what? Proton and chlorine minus. So if you look at this picture, this is HCl. When you put in water, they're completely what? Separated, right? These are what? These are chloride, these are what? Protons. Do you still see HCl? No. So acid like this that completely ionized, we call those acids strong acids. A lot of acids are like these. For example, these two acids, H2SO3 and H2CO3. They're actually formed from these two gases when they dissolve in water. For example, H2SO3 is formed by reaction of SO2, sulfur dioxide, and water. H2CO3, carbonic acid, is actually formed by dissolving CO2 and water, carbon dioxide and water. Okay, these two acids are nothing like HCl. When they dissolve in water, take a look. This is the bar chart, this is the picture. This is what happens when these acids are in water. The acids are still what? Take a look. Intact, right? They're nothing separating. Only what? I mean, this picture is just part of it. Only among these molecules, how many are actually breaking down? Only one. You see that? Only one acid and one the other ion. What does it mean? It means these acids, when they dissolve in water, owning a small percentage actually what? Ionize. Breaks apart. Majority of the acid is still what? Intact. We call these acids weak acids. Most acids are actually weak acids. Meaningless. Most of the molecules in water are still intact. Small percent actually what? Ionized. Okay, so actually ionized. Make sense? Weak acid and strong acids. Next, after we talk about acids, let's take a look at the bases. In Ariot's theory, bases are defined as compounds that can produce hydroxide ions. Again, what are hydroxide? We learned in chapter 5, OH minus. When these compounds that can produce hydroxide ions in aqueous solution, we call these compounds bases. Most bases are metal hydroxides, such as sodium hydroxide. What is sodium hydroxide? It is an ionic compound that contains what? Sodium plus and what? OH minus. When you dissolve sodium hydroxide in water, these two ions are going to break apart because sodium hydroxide is soluble in water. So they were gonna break apart. And when they break apart, what do you get? Sodium ion and what? Hydroxide ion. Compounds like these are called bases. Okay, are called bases. Of course, this is some property of bases. Okay, first one, bases taste better, and bases will feel slippery when you dissolve in water. This is some one of the property you can actually test. If you have a strong base solution, if you by accident or something touch it on the base, your hand, you actually feel very slippery on your hand. The reason is the base actually hydrolyzed some of the grease on your hand. Even though you're not, your hands are not greasy, but you have some natural grease on the, on the surface of your hand. Make them hydrolyze, that's why you feel slippery. And also they will turn a red litmus paper into blue color. Okay, again, bases are compounds producing hydroxide ions. Bases, especially 
group 1A and group 2A metal hydroxides of these. These are group 1A metal hydroxides. These are some of the group 2A metal hydroxides. The bases in blue, these hydroxides in blue, when they dissolve in water, they will completely dissociate into metal and hydroxides. Metal and hydroxides. And we call these bases strong bases. Strong bases are these metal hydroxides. When they dissolve in water, they completely what? Dissociate into what? Metal ion and hydroxide ion. Now, there's a difference between group 1A metal hydroxides and group 2A metal hydroxides. Group 1A metal hydroxides only produce what? One hydroxide per formula. Group 2A metal hydroxides produce how many? Two. Why? Because they have a subscript of two. Why? Because the charge of these metal is what? It's two. And that's why you have two per formula. That's why you're producing two metal hydroxides. Keep that in mind. Okay, you need to balance that in two. Don't put a subscript anymore. Hydroxide is OH minus. There's no OH minus two. If you want to balance, you have to put it to what? In front of the equation, uh, of the formula. Does that make sense? Okay, again, these are strong bases. Now, there are some bases that are weak bases. In this class, I only want you to take a look at the bottom case. This base is called ammonia. It's classified as a weak base. As you look at the structure, ammonia, NH3, it doesn't even have what? OH, right? So how does it produce OH when dissolved in water? This is the reaction showing how. When NH3 dissolves in water, the nitrogen will actually grab the proton from water. Think about it. When a proton is taken away from water, water becomes what? OH minus, right? Hydroxide. Of course, when NH3 grabs a proton, NH3 becomes what? Ammonium ion. Again, this is one we also we study in chapter five. NH4 plus is called what? Ammonium ion. And this is why NH3 is classified as a base. Because by definition, NH3 does produce what? Hydroxide in water. But it does not have hydroxide itself. What it does is it actually takes a proton from where? From water. So this OH minus actually came from what? Came from water. And we call this base a weak base. Okay, a weak base. Because this reaction doesn't happen completely. Okay, a lot of NH3 is still NH3. A small percentage of NH3 takes a proton from water to give you what? Hydroxide. Okay? Here are three practice for you, just like the acid ionization reaction. These are the base dissociation equations Ask you to practice. Write why these three bases are strong bases. Again, I put the key here. You can see the bases. When they dissolve in water, they dissociate into what? Metal ion and what? Hydroxide ions. And if you have group two metal hydroxides, remember you have to put a what? Two in front of the formula to balance the amount of hydroxide per formula. Does this make sense, guys? All right? Here, this table summarized six strong acids and six strong bases. Very commonly seen six strong acids and six strong bases. Some textbooks show seven strong acids, but here we use this one. We have six strong acids and six strong bases. What does it mean? It means if you don't see an acid or base here, it means the acid or base you're talking about is most likely what? Weak. Most likely. Six strong acids include HClO4, called perchloric acid, HCl, hydrochloric acid, HBr, hydrobromic acid, HI, hydroionic acid. This one is called nitric acid. This one is called sulfuric acid. These are the six strong acids. No debate. 
Okay, there is seven one again. Some some have debate. That's why some textbook talk talk about six. Some textbook talk about seven. These are six strong bases, including three group one A metal hydroxides and three what? Group two A metal hydroxides. Lithium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, and barium hydroxide. Okay, again, remember, for the group 2A metal hydroxides, each one will release how many? Two hydroxides per formula. Make sense? Okay, after we talked about acids and bases, let's take a look at the quick reaction between an acid and a base. We call the reaction a neutralization reaction. When an acid is treated with a base, or a base is treated with an acid, what happened is the proton from the acid will react with the hydroxide from the base to form what? H and OH form what? What is this? HOH, what is HOH? You don't have to check. What is it? Take a look. The proton from acid and OH from the base will give you what? What is this? How many H? Two. 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 And how many oxygen? Oh, One. What is it? Uh, water. Uh, is that right? Yes. Okay, this is water. So <clears throat> this is the product of what? Of neutralization. The other product, of course, is the metal, metal ion from the, the base and the non-metal ion from the acid will give you a ionic compound, sodium, sodium chloride. We call this product a salt. What is a salt? Salt is the other product from an acid and base reaction, which is the ionic compound from the acid base reaction. We call this water salt. Does it make sense? Now, if you have an acid that has two protons, like sulfuric acid, in order to neutralize it, how many hydroxide you need? Two. So if you use potassium hydroxide, you need how many? Two of those. So of course you have two proton, two hydroxide, you get how many water? Two water, and the formula of the salt will be K2SO4, right? The sulfate charge is what? Two, which becomes the subscript of what? Of potassium. Okay, so remember, if you want a neutralization reaction, the amount of the proton and the amount of hydroxide must be what? Equal. Okay, it must be equal. Now, the same neutralization reaction. This reaction, because of the nature of the reaction, or how they're reacting with each other, we can digest it. We can represent this reaction in three different ways. The first way is like we just showed, called complete molecular reaction. Shows everything. The acid, the base, the water, and the salt. Just shows the balance of the equation. We call that molecular equation. Complete everything. But if you look at the reaction, these are acid and bases. And we know by definition, acid will actually produce what? Proton and what? Chloramines. Base will actually produce what? Sodium plus and what? OH minus. And when they give you to sodium chloride, sodium chloride is an ionic compound that's soluble in water, right? We know ion, sodium, anything has sodium is soluble. So sodium chloride will actually dissociate to what? Sodium plus and what? CO minus. And of course, water is just water. So if you break down everything into ions, we call this equation the ionic equation. Does it make sense? Showing everything in what? In ionic except, except what? Water. Because water you cannot separate. Water is a molecular compound. Now, the final step. After you get this ionic equation, if you cancel the ions that are present on both sides of the arrow. Sodium, sodium. Chlorine, chlorine. What do you get? You get a proton and a hydroxide give you what? Water, nothing else, because sodium chloride cancel. We call this equation 
the net ionic equation. That ionic equation basically shows what? Shows what's really happening in acid-base neutralization reaction. What's happening is the proton from the acid reacts with the hydroxide from the base to give you what? To give you water. This makes sense? Okay, take a look. I list them in less, less words. It's all equations showing you complete molecular, break everything down into ions, except water. We call this full ionic. Cancel the one that are on both sides of the arrow. You get what? Net ionic. Does that make sense? Okay, again, follow that format. Write the equations for these three. Your turn. Okay, I put the keys in here. I want to go over them, and but again, I want you to practice, especially number three. I want you to think about it, how to write the net ionic, the, the, the three equations for, for number C. Okay, but I put the keys up for A and B. I'm going to go over with you. Okay, the first one is the reaction between potassium hydroxide and nitric acid. See that? Potassium hydroxide, nitric acid. Each one has one proton, one hydroxide, so the ratio is what? One and one. The product is water and KNO3, potassium nitrate. Then I break HNO3 into proton and nitrate. KOH breaks down into K plus and OH minus. KNO3 breaks down into K plus and NO3 minus. Water is water. Then I cancel potassium, cancel nitrate. I get what? Net ionic. Does this make sense? Okay, next one okay, is the reaction between hydrobromic acid and barium hydroxide. In this case, if you take a look, barium hydroxide has how many, how many hydroxides? Two. So if you want to neutralize two hydroxide, how many hydrobromic acid you need? Two. That's why I put a two in front of it. Right? And again, of course, two proton, two hydroxide, you get what? Two water. And the salt will be BABR2. Again, the charge is BR is 2, so the charge becomes what? The subscript of bromide. Bromide charge is 1. Right? Then I break everything into ions 2H, 2H plus, 2BR, 2BR minus, barium, BA2 plus, 2OH, 2OH minus. Is that right? Here, BA, BA2 plus. BR2 becomes 2BR minus. There's no PR2. You have to put the 2 in front of what? The ion. BR is BR minus. So 2 means what? 2 of BR minus. And then what? 2 water. Then I cancel the BA, cancel 2 of the BR, I get what? 2 proton, 2 hydroxide, and what? 2 water. Then I divide by the coefficient by 1 because 2 and 2 and 2 basically means what? 1 and 1. This is the net ionic. Again, practice it with these and get an idea about what's really happening in a acid and base neutralization reaction. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes? Good? All right? Next. Okay, we're going to start looking and, and take a look at and do math now. If you guys remember, we know the oxygen of water has greater electron activity. Is that right? We're learning chapter five, four and five. Greater electron activity means this oxygen of water has what charge? Has what charge? Think about it. has greater electron activity of this oxygen. So it pulls the electron more towards itself. So the, this side of the water has what charge? Electrons are what? Negatively charged. So this side of the oxygen will have a slight what? Negative charge. So that means the hydrogen side will have a slight what? Positive charge. So that's why you can see that when I put these two water molecules, I put them in this side. Because the hydrogen of one water is going to attract to a, the oxygen of another water. You can see there's an attraction here. Okay, they're facing this way. And this bonding we're learning in Chapter 5 is called what bond? Hydrogen bond. Is that right, guys? Now, they are attracting with the other, but there is a tiny chance 
Okay, later on we said the chance is very low, one out of the 10 million. Is the attraction is too strong that the oxygen takes the hydrogen from another water to give you a hydronium ion, and the other water, of course, after taking a proton away, becomes what? Hydroxide. You see what happens in here? One of the water takes a proton from another. The water that takes the water that takes the proton becomes hydronium ion. The water that loses the proton becomes what? Hydroxide. This reaction again happens in a very small chains, but does happen in water. Is called the self ionization of water. What is self means? It means water are doing this by themselves. They generate what? Ions. Is that right? Now, we all know new, water is neutral, right? No matter, no matter, nobody say water is acidic or basic. Water is neutral. But what's, why water neutral still has these two? This, we know this is what? Acid. This is what? Base. But we know water is neutral. So how do we, how can we explain this? Even though water is doing this self-ionization, but when this happens, whenever you generate a hydronium ion, you at the same time also generate what? The hydroxide, right? Because only when you grab this one, two, you, you always generate both together. So that means what? The amount of the hydronium ion will always equal to the amount of what? The hydroxide. So the amount of these two is equal. That means what? The acid and base amount are equal. This tells us what? The term neutral is used to describe water or any solution in which the amount of these two are what? Equal. It doesn't mean a solution only has that or we have what? If a solution is neutral, only means what? The amount of these two are what? Are equal. Now, like I said, this reaction, it does happen, but only happens in a very small chance. How small? And room temperature. Out of the 10 million water molecules, what is 10 million? 10 to the what? A million is 10 to the 6. 10 million is 10 to the 7. So out of 10 to the 7, only one water or two water does this. So that is why we have this mathematical equation. Okay, one water does that actually, not two water, one water. The concentration of the proton and the concentration of hydroxide multiply together equals to 10 to the negative 14. Remember, it's a one out of what? 10 million, right? So one out of, one over the 10 to the seventh. Another one is the same, one out of 10 to the seventh. So one out of 10 to the seventh times one of the 10 to the seventh is one out of what? 10 to the 14th. So one times 10 to the negative 14 means what? One over 10 to the 14. You can see how small the chances are. The concentration, we remember, bracket stands for what? Concentration, we're learning in chapter five. Okay, the concentration of this one multiplied by this one equals to one times 10 to the negative 14th at room temperature. We call this equation and this number Kw. K called ion product constant. W stands for water. Okay, so KW means the ion product constant of what? Of water. Now you might wonder why, why do we use this? What's this useful? This equation is useful because it doesn't only apply to water. It actually applies to any solution in which water is the solvent. Again, when, when the solution water is the solvent, we call that solution what? Aqueous solution. So that means as long as your solution is water is the solvent, you have this equation. 
And remember, this k is called a what? Constant. What is a constant? What is a constant? Means this number is what? Doesn't change. Doesn't change. No matter how these are changing, the <clears throat> concentration multiplied together always equal to what? 1 times 10 to a negative 14. As long as you remain at room temperature, which is you know, 25 degrees Celsius. So, now you have two things that multiply together equal to a constant. Means what? If you know one thing, you can what? Calculate that. Is that right? Think about it. If I divide OH minus on both sides, I get what? I get proton H equal to KW divided by what? OH minus. Or if I divide by proton both sides, I get OH minus equal to what? KW over what? Proton. So that means if I know proton, I can use KW divide proton to calculate what? OH minus. Or if I know OH minus, I can use KW divide by OH minus to give you what? Proton. Is that useful? See, these two always multiply equal to the same number. So if I know one thing, I can always calculate to what? To another. Does this make sense? That's why this is useful. And you're going to use this a lot in your quiz and tests. Now, let's analyze the equation. Analyze the number. We know proton multiplied by OH minus equal to what? 10 to the negative 14. If we have a neutral solution, remember neutral means what? These two are equal, right? If those two are equal and they multiply has to equal 10 to the negative 14th, then they both have to equal to what? 10 to the negative 7th, right? 10 to the negative 7 times 10 to the negative 7 equal to what? 10 to the negative 14th. That's the only way you can make them equal. So that means what? For a neutral solution, not only these two are equal, but they're both equal to what? 1 times 10 to negative 7. The concentration, again, bracket stands for concentration. Make sense? Now, let's take a look at another scenario. If I add a little more of proton, remember when they're equal, they're both what? 10 to negative 7. If I add more proton into the solution, what happens? The proton will be greater than 10 to the negative 7. Is that right? If I add more proton. But remember, if proton becomes greater, the other one has to be what? Smaller. Because again, when they multiply together, they have to equal to what? 10 to the negative 14. So if you have a solution with some added proton, then the proton will be greater than OH minus. When proton is greater, proton will be greater than 10 to the negative 7. And OH minus will be what? Smaller than 10 to the negative 7. Remember, they multiply together, still has to equal to what? 10 to the negative 14. If that's the case, we call the solution what? Acidic. So now you know what is acidic. Acidic means they're both existing, but proton is what? Higher than 10 to the 87th, and the one that one is smaller. Of course, proton will be higher than what? OH minus. Same way. If I don't add proton, if I add OH minus, then what happens? OH minus will be greater than 10 to negative 7th, then proton has to be what? Smaller than 10 to negative 7. So we have this equation. Proton will be smaller than OH minus. We call the solution what? Basic. Please, you have to be very, like a reflex, know when you have a concentration, you can determine, hey, I know that compared to 10 to the negative 7, I know the solution is basic or, or acidic. Because both are existing, you have to compare what? Compare both. Okay, you can use both. Okay, here again, is the charted format like we just talked about. If they're neutral, again, they're both equal to 10 to the negative 7. If something is acidic means what? Proton is higher. Protein is higher means what? Higher than 10 to the 7th. OH is lower means lower than what? 10 to the 7th. Has to be, otherwise they won't multiply together to get what? 10 to the 40. And still basic, OH minus is higher. Higher than what? Higher than 10 to the 7th. And proton is lower, lower than what? 10 to the 7th. Make sense? 
again, this is the last way of showing you the we have charted the way, we have equation way, just want to give you an idea. How do we understand this quantitatively? Using what? Using the ion product water of 10 to negative 14. Does this make sense, guys? Okay, if you add OH minus, sorry, if you add proton, proton will be what? Higher than 10 to negative 7. Again, 10 to negative 2, 3, 4, 5 is higher than 10 to negative 7. Then the other one should be what? Lower than 10 to negative 7, which is 10 to negative 8, 9, 10, 11, and 7. The same if you add OH minus, OH minus will be 10 to negative 6, 5, 4, 3, then proton will be what? 10 to negative 8, 9, 10, 11, depends how much you have. Good? All right, quickly. Okay, quickly. Don't look at the answer. Of course, the answer one of them is here. Don't look at the answer. Take a look at these three equations. Of course, these three concentrations. Tell me, do you think the solution is acidic or basic or neutral? The first one. Acidic because um, there's more proton. More proton because the proton is what? Higher than 10 to negative 7. So it means what? More proton. More proton means what? Acidic. Very good. The second one. Less or OH minus. More, more OH minus because the OH minus concentration is what? Higher than 10 to negative 7. So means what? Means you have more OH minus. So this one is basic. Very good. How about this one? Also basic because there is less um, proton. Because the proton concentration is what? Less than 10 to negative 7. So what? You have less proton. Means it is what? Basic. Very good. Okay, next. It said. No matter if you were given proton or hydroxide, you can use the one you have to calculate what? The other, right? So for example, this one I'm giving the proton number. How do we calculate the OH minus? I use what? 10 to negative 14 divided by what? The proton, right? Let me put on the board. Remember we said proton, I'm going to do one and you do the rest of them, okay? Uh, proton times OH minus always equal to what? 1 times 10 to negative 14. So if I divide it by proton on both sides, hydroxide equals to what? 10 to negative 14 divided by what? Proton. Is that right? So 10 to negative 14 divided by proton, what is proton? 1 times 10 to negative 4 equals to what? 10 to negative 10. That's the concentration of what? Of hydroxide. And you do the same thing. If you're given hydroxide, you can calculate what? Calculate proton. Okay, again, no matter which concentration you were given, you should be able to calculate what? Calculate the other using what? One of these two. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on. We move on to a more important concept. If you notice that when we have a solution, no matter what we're talking about, the proton concentration or hydroxide concentration, the concentration are relatively what? Low. Right? They're 10 to negative 4, 10 to negative 3, 10 to negative 7, 10 to negative 5. Using scientific notation is one way to represent the acidity or basicity of a solution, but not the most convenient way. Because the numbers are what? Still small. It's a scientific notation, not very straightforward. So chemists invented a very concise way to represent the proton or hydroxide concentration by taking the negative log of proton concentration. Take a look at this. Negative log of proton concentration. And then we call this the pH. P stands for the power. What is power? Negative log of whatever the proton concentration is. You just do the negative log. The number you get will be Make sense? 
I didn't, I know you have part of a pH now, you know what pH is. pH is basically what? Negative log of protons. So for example, the one we just have is the stuff on the board. What is the part of illustration? 10 to negative what? Fourth. So if we're talking about the pH of that guy, negative log of 1 times 10 to negative fourth, if you guys are good at math, the next log, this log is, is the, the base number 10 log. What do you think the answer is? Because the base number is 10, so whatever inside the log will become what? Become the exponent. So it's negative 4. Negative, negative 4 is what? Plus 4. Again, if you don't, math is not the best, you can use calculator. Put negative log and putting the proton concentration in a parenthesis. You see that? Why we use pH? Because the proton concentration now becomes what? A very simple number. Of course, it doesn't have to be a whole number. Sometimes it can be fractions, depends on your proton concentration. But the number now is more what? More straightforward. Okay, that's why we call the pH a very compact and concise way to represent solution concentration. But there's one thing that a lot of people get confused. That is, remember the pH is the negative log of proton concentration. That makes a mathematical equation like this or relation like this. When you have the proton concentration increase, what is increase? lower than what, 10 to negative 7, right? 10 to negative 4, 10 to negative 3, then your pH is actually going to what? Decrease. Why? Because think about the exponent, right? We said 10 to negative 4 is what? pH will be what? Will be 4. So if you increase, it becomes 10 to negative 3, think about what pH will be. Will be 3. So when you have an increase proton, increase proton means what? More acidic, right? More proton means more acidic. So if you have increased proton, the pH is actually what? Decreasing. Okay, decreasing. And because the ion product water is 10 to negative 14, so normally the range of the pH is from 0 to 14. Okay, this is the scale of pH. Okay, and this one actually shows you some common uh, liquid we're encountering in, in our daily lives, what their pH will be. Some here, some here. The drinking water of a pH is around 7.2, close to neutral. Okay, neutral is 7. And you can see these with lower pH ones. Again, lower pH means what? Higher what? Proton. So these are called acidic, right? These with higher pH means what? Lower proton. These are what? Basic. Again, to play with the pH scale, there's a link here. You can click the link and play with that, some interactive things to, to, to get used to pH. But keep this in mind, very important, I believe both things. pH decreases as what? As the proton concentration increase. Means what's proton concentration increase? Means what? The solution becomes more what? Acidic. The pH is actually decreasing. So that means what? Among these, hydrochloric acid is most acidic because the concentration is 1 minus log of 1 equal to what? Equal to 0. Okay, log 1 equals to 0. So the pH is 0 when you have 1 molar hydrochloric acid, which is very acidic. Okay, again, click this one. It's very helpful. This is the interactive kind of like uh, page for you to get used to pH. Okay, this is... Uh, the pH scale shows you better about what happened when you change the concentration of proton or hydroxide, what's going on with the pH. Okay, like I said, get used to the pH scale. We said here, neutral, proton concentration is 10 to minus 7, and hydroxide concentration is also what? 10 to minus 7, then pH will be what? 7. When you decrease, or oh, sorry, when you increase proton concentration, you can see that the proton concentration will become what? Negative 6, negative 5, negative 3. Then pH is actually what? 
decreasing from seven to six and five, of course, hydroxide will be what? Will be decreased too. Okay, and if you decrease the proton concentration becomes negative eight, negative nine, the pH is actually what? Increasing. Also, if you notice that one unit of pH increase or de decrease doesn't matter, the concentration of proton is actually changing by what? 10 times. Is that right? So think of the, from 7 to 6, the concentration increase from minus 7 to minus 6 means how many times? 10 times. From 7 to 5, you're changing from minus 7 to minus 5 means how many times? 100 times. Is that right? So one unit of pH difference, actually the concentration, the real concentration is changed by a factor of 10. Okay, three units difference is a thousand times difference. So it's not like a small difference. You say, well, between seven and four, is, it's only three units. But the concentration is actually a thousand times different. From negative seven to what? To negative four. Okay, another thing. Another thing, if you notice that when we talk about pH, we're only looking at what? Proton concentration. Is that right? Say 15 is what? Minus 15. Minus 14 is what? 14. Minus 13 is 13. Nothing to do with what? Hydroxide. Even though these two are related, I know, but when you calculate the pH, it is the minus log of what? Proton concentration. Okay, proton concentration. Very good. Okay, that's why. Uh, we have here, calculation here. If I ask you to calculate the pH, if you were given proton concentration, you can do it right away. Minus log of what? Proton concentration. Minus log of proton concentration, no problem. But for B, if you're not given proton concentration, you were given hydroxide concentration, what do you need to do? You need to first use Kw, divided by hydroxide to give you what? Proton. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Proton is not given. You have to calculate what? Proton first. This is how we calculate the proton. Use, use Kw divided by what? Divided by hydroxide to give you proton. Don't get it wrong. And of course, you can see the numbers. This one pH is four. What? Lower than acidic. acidic. These two numbers are what? eight and 10, higher than seven, so they're what? Basic. Okay, this is a lot easier way to represent pH. Okay, and again, something we have mentioned already, small changes will be, a small changes will be have big effects. A different pH, one unit difference is what? 10 times the concentration. For example, you can see that ocean water is 8.3, tap water is around 5.3, there are three units of different, means what? The proton concentration is actually what? A thousand different. This is a thousand more acidic than what? Than ocean water. Okay, same milk, tomato juice, you can see even one or two units, the acidity or basicity is actually 10 times, 100 times a different. Different, next, okay, next is we have normally two methods of measuring pH in our labs. Okay, one method is little, like a little roughly, or we call approximation method, is using a paper called a pH paper. I think you guys have that in your lab kit. You're gonna use that. Basically, you dip the paper in your solution, or you use a glass rod to touch the solution, then touch the paper, and read that color right away. Okay, the same, guys. When you read, when you use pH paper, make sure to read the color compared to the, the color chart right away, within two seconds. Don't leave it on your counter or a table for like a five or, or 10 minutes and read again. The color won't be the same. So touch or add a drop of your solution onto the pH paper. You can tear small pieces, uh, it's enough. You don't need a long strip, okay? Compare the color of the pH paper with the solution with the chart, read the color. Sometimes, okay, sometimes, if the color is between two colors, for example, this is greenish, this is blue, if it's some kind of bluish green, if you think it's bluish green between two colors, you can actually assign half. Or between yellow and green, if it's greenish yellow, you can see that hey, this is eight, that's nine, I'm saying it's 8.5, you can do that. But again, using pH paper is, a, is an approximate method, not very accurate. 
If you want to get an accurate reading on method, we use this device called a pH meter. Okay, pH meter basically has a probe. You insert the probe into the solution. Okay, into the sub of course, the pH meter is more expensive, especially the probe. And also, if you want to use a pH meter, you have to calibrate the machine first using standardized solutions. Okay, so those are uh, something about acidity and basicity and pH and acids, some basic about the chemistry and we're covering today. And before we finish this lecture, I want to go over the math with you one more time okay, to show you something we have not shown on this slide about the pH. Okay, you may use or find useful. Remember we said pH is negative log of what? Proton concentration. Is that right? Okay, this is the equation that will help us to calculate the pH if I know the proton concentration. I just use my calculator, put minus log of what? Proton concentration. But what if I tell you, hey, the pH is 3.5? Can you tell me the proton concentration like you're working backwards? What do we use? We basically rearrange this equation. I got proton concentration because this is the base number 10 log equals to 10 to the negative pH. Okay, this is how we arrange that log equation. I can calculate proton concentration if I know the pH number of the solution. For example, like I said, if my pH solution is 3.5, then the proton will be what? 10 to negative 3.5. Then you use your calculator. Hey, what is 10 to negative 3.5? You will find out it's a number between 10 to negative 3 and 10 to negative 4. It's not a number if you want to interest it. But this is not right because we know scientific notation. This number has to be what? Whole number. So you still need to use your calculator to do your math. What is 10 to negative 3.5? And then you get a scientific notation. That is how do we calculate Proton concentration from what? From pH. Does it make sense, mm -hmm. guys? Okay, um, I think we're almost done. And uh, next time, we're going to take a look at, okay, take a look at uh, the pH. Of course, this chart shows you the pH of some common fluids, liquids, or environment, our blood, milk, pure water, and tomato juice, etc. But of course, next class, we're gonna take a look at the pH of the sea water and of the of the normal rainwater and also the acid rainwater and we will explain why if you take a look normal rainwater is actually what lower than seven right acid rainwater is even lower than normal rain but on the other hand sea water is what higher than seven so we're going to explain why these are acidic why that's basic and why these rains are more acidic than no more rings, right? So let me close or stop the recording.